opportunity come up for you guys? Did someone reach out to you or did you guys apply? Yeah, somebody from CBS reached out to me um, and they basically wanted my brother and I uh, mm-hmm. to do the race together. He's, um, but he's still coaching. So it was like, I can't do it. But then I'm playing golf and, and Tim, why don't you <laughs> explain <laughs> how I would happen? So Rex said to me, he says, yeah, he says, they, they asked me to be on that show, The Amazing Race. And, uh, and he said, they want me and my brother to do it. And I said, oh, okay. He says, but I don't think Rob can do it because he's still coaching. But I have an alternate. I said, oh, okay. And then he kind of gives me a long pause. And I said, can you share who it is? And he says, yeah, it's you, tell me. <laughs> so uh, I said to him, and, and I says, and we call my mother-in-law, Yaya. He says, it's Greek for grandma. And she lives with us. So I said to Rex, I said, you do know that's Yaya's show, right? Like, she's not missed an episode, a season. Like, like this is like her her thing. And uh, that's when Rex was like, all right, Rob's out, you're in. So I came right. home and said, hey, I think I'm going on the amazing race. So she was just as excited as we were. Yeah, you got to do it for Yaya. Right. <laughs> well, once you guys realized you were going, what was your preparation? Well, after panic set in, uh, yeah. when I tried to run, and I realized that uh, I, I wasn't 20 years old again, that uh, I was like, uh-oh, I got a long way to go. I gave this commitment because um, literally I made it a mile and I was like, this is it. Like I literally had to stop, walk up a hill. And then after like three weeks or so, I ended up running like three and a half miles a day. So it, it was a slow process, but man, I panicked. Initially I was like, I've, I've got to get better. And I've had to cut weight. Like I knew I had to start a diet and do that. I never wanted to let Tim down. You know, I was like, you know, I, I just never want to be an anchor for him. And, you know, so I, I tried to get myself in the best shape I could in a month and a half or whatever time we had. Yeah. And you lost 50 pounds. That's incredible. Right. Yeah. It was, you know, like I say, it's a deck chair off the Titanic, but it's, uh, <laughs> But it was, you know, I, I knew I needed to because there's no way I could move. And so I had to drop some weight and, and you know, that part of it went, went well and learned how to drive a stick, you know. So, you know, we, we did what we could do to, to uh, prepare ourselves. Yeah, I, uh, being in law enforcement, we use uh, GPS quite a bit. So when I was at work, um, I just used maps. So if we had to get to an area that we've never been in before, I would use a map and try to read the map. Mm-hmm. Um, if it wasn't situation obviously but um if uh and then um i I've, I've run uh multiple marathons i'm actually training for another one um to uh, raise money awareness for als which uh, my mom had she just passed away on monday mm-hmm. um so i've run multiple marathons uh power lifts so I, I i work out five or six days a week so i i was doing um all that including the maps because i was the navigation guy mm-hmm well, in the first leg, you guys killed that keg roll. Oh, and we saw other teams struggling. What was the key to that one? Well, I, I think we were more disappointed that it wasn't full because we would have drank. <laughs> but uh, that was, um, it, it probably would have been easier to roll if it was half full because it, it was empty. So it being mm-hmm. empty kind of made it a little bit awkward. Um, but once once you, the, the first time we didn't get it, it, it took two attempts. So on the second time, Um, it was just, once you got the the momentum down, it was kind of easy to figure out. Yeah. And Rex, you seem like you just kind of threw your body on it. That's pretty much it. (laughs) And uh, I got a lot of weight behind me on those, but, um, yeah, as Tim knows, we're used to handling kegs every now and then. So, uh, we kind of wish they were, I mean, not just to to roll easier, but maybe the other teams would have struggled more even with them. But, Mm. uh, but now we had a good time. I think the first that the first episode was kind of in our wheelhouse. Like mm-hmm. Tim broke, Tim smashed through the ice in like three hits. Then we got the keg rolls. We were fine. And then the saw, we made up a ton of ground on the saw. You know, we were right through that like butter. So it was, that was kind of in our wheelhouse. Unfortunately, we found out the second episode, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> Well, now you already mentioned that you were training with maps, uh, but you mentioned in the episode, you're not so great with maps. Did that end up being a bit of a challenge on the race? Well, well, the, the, the maps that I trained in were all in English. I didn't train in English. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, 
and and the fact is you know the map that you use you know that the town that i work in is a small town so you have like a tiny map and on the race they give you i think they go and look for the biggest map that they can possibly find so you have a map that pretty much takes up the whole back seat and it's in a different language so when you open up that map it was holy cow this is a huge map so you're trying to find out where you are in the on this giant map of this tiny Volkswagen. Um, so that that was definitely a curveball too. I feel like they throw every curveball at you imaginable just to try you all, throw you off and not get you 100% comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I was zero help to them because every <laughs> single word looks the same to me. You know, mm -hmm. so being dyslexic, I'm like, I've never seen any words like this. So I was no help whatsoever. Yeah, I was say, hey, Rex, I'm looking for a street with an L. He's like, well, there's a street that's 15 letters and it has an L in it. <laughs> yeah. No, first letter is L. <laughs> well, now this leg was definitely tough, but it was all musical. Do you guys have any musical background? Zero. <laughs> <laughs> as, you, as you can tell. <laughs> So yeah, right that's there. the thing. Like we, none of us played an instrument in our life, mm -hmm. you know. So when when Tim says zero back, like literally, we have, I mean, zero background. So it was that was rough, and we knew in that all the couples were like dancers, mm -hmm. and then we had the cheerleaders. So that might as well be dancers, and then there was us. <laughs> uh oh, I knew we were in trouble, but. I had no idea how much trouble we were until we got right to the bells. And then it was like, mm -hmm. we're that we're in, 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 in a lot of trouble. You also didn't know it because when you're practicing, they showed as you're practicing in that other room, mm -hmm. um, you're separate from the accordion. So we were practicing like, all right, we got this. And then we walked into the room and you think you got it. And I looked at Rex and I said to him, I said, we got to play it in tune with that thing. And uh, that's when all, both of us were both like, holy cow, this is the <laughs> got even harder like a next step mm. harder practicing so was that the trick the rhythm playing with someone else I, yeah i would say it was i mean two guys with no music background i mean it's kind of hard to explain but well i think we were doing more rhythm and memorization i was trying to memorize which ones to pick up mm -hmm. at each time because i'm not we're not very like tune inclined you know what mm -hmm. i mean so of I right, grab the D and C, grab the A and B and then cross. And then, so you're doing a memorization. And then when you had, you had to play some together at the same time where I had to pick up one and Rex had to, then you had a crisscross. And that's when with that tune, when you have no music inclination whatsoever, that, that was, you're just trying to do it by memorization. And, and by the 10th the attempt, as they stated, it felt like it was more than 30 um you know that that's when that's when we knew we were kind of in trouble well before you even get to the bells you're yodeling on a mountaintop in austria uh what was the trick here rex did did your dyslexia play a part in this i think it did a little bit because part of that is um like i have no problem reading now but when i was a kid i certainly had a problem because when words aren't you, you aren't familiar to you you absolutely struggle. So I can't, print. I, you know, letters kind of, you know, get, it, it's hard to explain, but they kind of get jumbled around a little bit. So I couldn't just read them the way other groups could. And then, you know, I had to memorize it. And, and the first one wasn't bad, the first two, but when you got down to that third one, yeah, it's just, I just struggled so bad in it. And, you know, but again, I just kept hanging in there. And I was just hoping that eventually I'd get down, you know, I'd get it down. I'd say it enough that eventually I'd get it down. But, and that's what happened. It just took forever. It seemed like. Well, it didn't take forever. I mean, Claire struggled no. more than you. So you got that going for you. That is true. And, <laughs> and it was so funny because there were a couple of them, but, but yes, because she was the very first one to arrive and then almost like second last to leave, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I was surprised because. And she's really smart and everything, but yeah, she did struggle with that big time. What people don't know, like there's pressure. Like you certainly yeah. sense the pressure of it as well. You don't want to let your partner down. And like in Claire's situation, she probably should have practiced first a little more mm -hmm. because we certainly should have practiced the bells more, mm -hmm. but you almost feel like you don't have time to do that. 
And, and so we just kind of showed up and, and, and let it eat, so to speak. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's not the ideal strategy, I don't think. So you, you know that you're at the bells for a while. You're feeling it. When you leave and head to the pit stop, do you have a sense that you might be in last place? We definitely knew we were. <laughs> yeah, we, we knew we were done. Like there was no, there was no doubt we were done. And cause it, we had been there forever and it just, you know, unfortunately we're just looked at, well, we did the best we can. Let's finish it. We jogged it out and let's just, let's finish it, you know? And, and that's what, that's what we did. The, the, the best part about it was once we were eliminated, we're like, finally, we can go get a beer. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that, that was, that was something that we enjoyed. Now find the keg that is full. Yes. Yep. Well, was there anything that you wish you had trained for now that Bells took you out? It's 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 always easier to say what you should have done after you already did it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? So I mean, uh, yeah, obviously, you know, I, I wish I wish I would have learned. I, I wish my parents would have put me in music class. And, and, and <laughs> so I, I blame my mom and dad for not putting me, uh, not making me take an instrument. <laughs> yeah, that's. That's true. And you know what? It's funny because we've talked about this a bunch. If we would have just followed Abby and uh, and them out, uh, Will out, because they drove past us, like we were actually ahead of them. They drove past us. I'm like, if we would have just hooked up on them, uh, it would have been, we, we would have been, had more time uh, because we kind of got turned around a little bit um, with our directions and we ended up behind a lot of teams where we could have just, if we could have just followed them the way we followed Michael and, uh, and Marcus, that, that might've helped us also. Right. Well, what was the highlight of the race for you guys? I think the highlight was just hanging out together. I think that was the highlight for me. Um, you know, because of COVID, you're, you're, you weren't able to go out on the towns and go to the pubs and, and, and spend time around the people and the culture. And, um, because you, you couldn't afford to get COVID and, and, uh, but we're so basically you're sequestered in your room the whole time, mm -hmm. but that was the funnest time too. We just had a, we, we just had a blast hanging out with each other. Yeah, I agree. I mean, uh, you're basically living with someone for the whole time that you're there. And mm -hmm. I, I almost wish that there was a camera in our room because we were, either busting on each other, having <laughs> fun of each other the whole entire time, or just doing a play-by-play -play in German on Animal Planet, because yeah. uh, TVs are in a different language. So, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, probably just getting a chance to, to spend that much time with, with one of your best friends is, is a pretty cool experience. And my like my wife said, though, she goes, that's like putting a bear and a badger together. <laughs> you, know, for, you know, for the first five days, literally, we never left our room. And it was like, oh, my gosh, like, you couldn't wait to leave, you know. But uh, but we did. We had a blast. Thank you for your time today. All right. Thank pleasure. you.